Hi Sandy, hi Hilary, I'm just putting it up on my computer so I can see what's going on. Alright, let's see. Hi Penny, hi Andrea. There we go. I should be able to see it pretty soon. My computer's on a go slow today, oh it doesn't want to work. No, not having any of it. For some unearthly reason. Oh, what's scared in here? I'm not going to be able to see any comments. How annoying. Never mind. Hi, Devon. I can see it on my phone a little. Hi, Donna. From Nevada. Wow. Wow. Hi, Philippa. Obviously, you're all on there. Uh, Julie Hickey Designs page, but I can't see it on my computer. Why is it doing this? Hi, Anne. <laughs> oh my, don't you just... Hiya, Joe. Don't you just love Facebook? Oh, there we are. Finally, she finds it. There we go. I just wanted to be able to see you. Um, there we are. What's going on with the noise? There we are. Oh, happy days. We've finished it. Uh, I've got a new set up today. I bought a new... Um... Hi, Gail. Hi, Brian. I bought a new arm to hold me bits and bobs. So we're a little bit closer because of the other one. I was miles away. You couldn't really see what I was doing. So I am hoping that... It works okay. It's metal, so it shouldn't shake as much as it usually does. Oh. <laughs> what, what part of don't, don't text me because I'm doing a live to the family not understand? It's hilarious. Right, okay, we've got, oh, we've got quite a few on. If I've missed you, I do apologise. Hi, Christine. I'll, um, I'll pop back after I've done it. And um, I'll answer any questions there if I miss them as we go along. It is a quick live, you know me, I prep loads. Um, I don't like keeping people for hours. I always feel like really bad that I've kept you on for ages. But hey-ho, we'll, we'll go through it. So this is the card, and I'll try and go slow because we're a bit nearer. The focus might be out even though I've set it. Um, this is the card. You've all seen it because it was on... It was on um, Julie's page and various other pages and crafty friends of Julie Hickey's page but I had such a nice lot of comments on it I thought you know what I think I'm going to do that one next so I shall pop it up off the way over there so I can see it and make sure I'm doing the right thing with the old colouring as so I'm just going to produce the exact same one to be fair I have got another one similar but in a different colour which I'll show you at the end it's my post for tomorrow so you're getting a sneaky peek so um Thank you, Philippa. Hiya, Dawn. Um, right, so I'm going to run through what I'm going to use and then we'll crack on. There is quite a lot of products because you might have noticed, but I like putting all kinds of stuff on my cards. Um, and I've gone, I've gone a bit haywire there with, with the amount of different stuff I've used on this one. But nevertheless, um, um, we've got stamps and die sets, okay? And the stamps and die sets are... Um, fresh florals and floral fancies both come with dies so they're uber easy to, to cut out um, as you can see mine are well loved well used um, so I'm just going to pop the stamps out the way and I'm not using every single one of them um, I'm using a couple from one a couple from the other but they all mix and match really well so those two hi Jane those two are the flower stamps mainly that I'm using, I'll pop them out of the way. Um, this one as well is absolutely lovely. Um, it's called Scent With Love and it's just a, look at the, look at the state of it. Um, and that's at a bath by the way as well. That's how messy I am. It's, as you can see, it's an envelope loaded with flowers so we're going to be using that one. And obviously can't make anything without using a butterfly or um, or a dragonfly so I've got Hazel's Butterfly A6 stamp set as well um, we're using 
just the two small ones on this one on this occasion. Let's just see if I can straighten that up a bit. And and we're using the assorted sentiments die cut foilables. And in this instance, I've got the turquoise fab foil um, from Wow. So there's another load. And I'll just keep these dies here a minute because. What I've done is I've pre-stamped things out because obviously you don't need to see me stamping stuff out. You know Julie's stuff stamps really well. So I set everything out, what I'm going to use, and you can see which flowers I've picked from, from each. Uh, hi, Christine. From each set. Okay. So if you lay them out on your stamp platform or, you know, whatever you're doing, if you do it like this, you need... To do that twice you need to stamp that out twice for those exact items two of each of these things you may may use two or three uh, sets of the leaves depends on how much you want to put them in how many you want to use um, but yeah so and as you can see it's really really easy to cut them out because you just lay your dies on top a little tiny bit of sticky okay there you go. And you can put them all through in one pass, which is absolutely class. And as you can see, I know you are, it takes a while to find them. Oh, look at that. I found it first time. Oh, my goodness. Usually I'm turning it and turning it. But, yeah, you can see you can put them all on. This, obviously, there is no die for, but it's not difficult to cut out. It's quite an easy one to cut out. So lay them on, push them through your die cut machine, go through the whole process twice. Bob's your uncle. You've got everything you need. Um, I don't have a die set. Philippa will be able to tell you. I don't have a die set for the butterflies. I'm not sure whether there is one, um, but I don't have one. But I find them quite easy to fussy cut out in any case. So, um, as I said, I'm sure Philippa will let you know if there is or not. I should have checked, but I didn't. So, what I'm using to colour them and to colour the card and all is um, a mixture, really, of... Distress Oxides, and I've got Tumble Glass and Spun Sugar. And the actual same colours in ink, but I've got one slightly darker, because I find, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Distress Ink, Spun Sugar is extremely light. Um, there's not a great deal of pigment colour in it, so I've, I've gone one darker uh, with the worn lipstick. I may use it, I may not, I don't know yet. So I've got those. Um, everything is stamped in Versafine ink oh there is one for the butterflies oh brilliant thanks very much Yvonne um yeah I've used Versafine because obviously you're going to be water coloring so you need something that's not going to bleed I've got that the usual glue um and I have got some cheap um watercolor pens I've just got a couple of greens um pink and a blue okay because it's the speedy tracy method of water coloring well the image these images they're quite small so you don't have to do too much shading which is brilliant and i kind of like the watercolory look anyway so let's see what we've got to start with here we go i've got everything cut out ready and i've got a ruler so i can measure it for you there is one for hazel butterflies fabulous Okay, so I don't usually score it, but because I'm on a live, I'm going to score it. This is a 5 by 7 card blank. Okay, perfect size for this uh, project that we're doing. Look at this here. I, <laughs> I left it near my heater and it walked it all. So what we want to do is create... <clears throat> I've got a really hoarse throat today, I don't know why. A swig of juice. Um, what we need to do is create a Z-Fell card. Really easy. So it measures five. Uh, it measures five inches. Okay. So what we're going to do is put this up and score the top one at two and a half because we want to fold it back on itself. So check me out using the scoreboard instead of just folding it in half. Okay, so we want to fold it back. Now, I never just, I never just, if I do score it, I never just fold it and um, crease it down straight away. 
first of all, I get it to where I want it to be because you don't, it depends on what size ball tool you've used. You might have a, a bit of an overhang or, an, or, you know, it might be a little short. So it'll find its groove. There we go. Perfect. Lines up perfectly. So then I cut the matten layers out. So because we've got a five inch by seven inch card, you can cut these down to a quarter of an inch smaller so that they're going to fit on there. Now, a quarter of an inch smaller um, gives you a slightly bigger border than this because what I did was I didn't cut it quite a quarter of an inch smaller, slightly more than that. So we're going, well, you know, I mean, you know what's a matte layer. So these things, you need one for in there as well. For every panel, we need a matte layer. And I've chosen the blue, could have chosen pink. <clears throat> but decided to go with the blue because it kind of made it pop a little bit better. So first thing I want to do is glue them on. We all had a great bank holiday. I haven't been out today. Um, I've been doing samples and I finished them. Yay! So I've had a day in my craft room. I haven't really seen anybody or spoke to many people either, so I don't know why my voice is so hoarse. So put your panels on. Okay. Really easy. I'm taking my time because this will be finished in like 10 minutes if I don't. <laughs> so there we go. Pop on your panels. Make sure they line up at the top and the bottom. If you've cut them straight, they should do. Hi Karen, nice of you to join and see what I'm up to. Nice simple card. Looks, it looks a lot more uh, difficult to do than it actually was. My kind of card. There we are. Make sure you've got a decent border on it. So we've got the mats and layers on. And then what we need to do, and I've used um, De La Rowney mixed media card for this. It's it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good one. It takes a lot of paper, uh, inks and stuff like that. So I've cut a layer down again. I've matte and layered. I think I had did a quarter of an inch on this one. So we've got these three panels that we now need to colour to go on there. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to get myself a bit of, of this stuff so I don't get it all over my mat. Right, so I'm going to bring in the oxides for this. I'm going to do the background in oxide. It's really simple. So I've got a nice brush for each one. Um, I'm going to start off, I think, with the pink. Okay. So all I'm going to do is randomly... Yeah, this is quite a light one. I'm just going to load up my brush. I hope you can see. It's very light, isn't it? Really, really light, but it's pretty. So... I'm just going to do, I'll lift it up so you can see, I'm just doing random splurges on the card, really. No uh, real skill in this. As many as you want. Just continue right the way across on all of them. On the three panels, that's going to go on your card. Okay. So load up your brush, put it on and give it a blend. You can always go back over and blend it once you've got your blue one in. So I'm going to go three splurges on this one. I do like a pastel card, but just lately I've been working with really... Uh, hi, hi Donna. Yeah, it is a nice... It's a pretty pink, isn't it? I don't own all the um, all the oxides. I'm, I'll be honest, I've, um, I've got more distress inks than I've got oxides. But I have a big birthday coming up. <laughs> You'll live in hope, just in case my daughter's watching. Um, I have a list <laughs> of the ones I do have and the ones I don't have, just in case she asks. So, uh, yeah, really big birthday coming up, sadly. But there you are. So, I'm going to work a little bit more pink in this one because it's quite a big panel. Uh, I did have the light turned off to start with, but it was... Hi, Maz. It was very, very, very dark and you couldn't see anything, so... 
thought, oh well, here we go. The nights are drawing in. Gone are the nights when you didn't have to put the lights on till nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Right, so in with the blue now. So you just fill in the gaps of where you left with the pink. Okay, and sometimes when you blend it over, you'll get a nice uh, purple colour with the blue and the pink merge. So, that's it. And if you do have harsh lines again, like I said, you can go back over with your pink ones and blend it out. But oxides take a little time to settle on your card, um, I find. While they're still wet, they kind of look a bit blotchy. It's only when they settle and dry on your, on your, on the cardstock you're using that you know it, it, you can see where you need more or you don't need more. So, like I said, pick up your pink one, and you can blend the blue and the pink together on each panel. Now, I guess that this would look great in different colours, and like I said, I've got one in a a similar card but different colours um, just to show you that I do use brights now and again I'll show you that at the end um, any of the, your favourite colour combinations would work with this really as long as you, you can cut well it doesn't really matter because I was going to say as long as you colour your florals in, floral, in flower colours but it doesn't matter does it because the flowers come in all different colours hi Linda no worries on you here all I've done is um, Inked a bit of card so far, really. I'm showing you what I'm using. How are you doing, Linda? Linda's one of the ladies that comes to my craft class on a Tuesday in Curragh. And sadly, she's not coming tomorrow. Right, so panel two. It is very pale, isn't it? It's quite weird because it's not as pale as this in real life. It must be a really strong light I put in this shed. There's a mini shed at the bottom of the garden. I had too much craft stuff to be in the house all the time. So I got relegated to the bottom of the garden. But I did get a nice shed out of it, so it's all good. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of getting a shed, girls. Buy too much craft stuff. There we go. Do you know, I really do like ink blending. I find it quite, uh, quite calming. Sad but true. There we go. And then I'm just going to blend over the edges of this um, with the pink again. And then I'll leave it dry while we go on to the next bit. There we go. Round, round the edge just to soften it. I mean, we are going to put quite a lot of stuff on this. So, see it comes with a nice little purple shade there, which is quite nice. And a little bit on that one, and then I'll put it to one side and soften it. Let it dry. Let it dry. And wipe my fingers. Get it everywhere. I've been working on bright colours today and everywhere I have to wash my hands a million times to get it off so I'm going to pop them up there out the way we need another craft room well yeah you've got two people haven't you you've got two lots of craft stash going on so you definitely definitely need to get a craft shed one each a he and she shed <laughs> I like it because it's somewhere to escape when um when uh, your partner's watching football or something, you're just, I'm just not into football, so there we go. Right, so they've gone off to one side, so I shall bring in the items that I said before. Okay. Um, I've cut two of everything, but I have coloured one lot already, so I just wanted to move along with it. So what I have done is I've got a piece of acetate, because save... And I've done the usual trick of putting a bit of, um, what's it called, washi tape on top. Um, but like I said, these, these images are quite small, so um, you don't really need to do a great lot of blending to get a cracking result. So 
I've got my little water pot and uh, I want to make this one look like that one okay so I'm doing the lazy method I'm just going to put a bit of water down and then I'm going to go in with the glue pen I'm just looking at this one above to see um, what needs to be done there we go I think I might put it on there actually they're not very juicy these pens they have been used quite a lot so I might have to go in with a bit of uh oh no that'll do you can see I hope you can see this it's quite it looks quite pale on screen I do apologize I think I might just get out one of the blues from here just to darken it up I've got a couple of different ones let's see they may be a bit juicier than the one I've got here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We'll go with that. Okay, pick up a bit. There we go. Put it in the middle. And then use your water just to blend it to the outside edge. And then your middle is already sorted for you. Okay, so just pick out the ones that you want blue first while you've got blue on your paintbrush. So I can see that I have this one in blue. And I'm just going to put a bit of water down to help it to move. And uh, paint in some detail. You can always go back over with the thin end of your pencil or your pen or whatever you're using. Um, to, you know, to add some detail to the lines. And if you go a bit heavy with the water, you can blot it off. So... I think I've told you before, I don't mind the um, the very watery look, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's my excuse anyway, I'm sticking to it. So we're going with a bit of blue over here on this one. I think I've done a blue bit on that one. I want it to, to be exactly the same as the one underneath, you see, so. Right, so now we need a bit of pink. On the rest, I seem to have a lot. Oh no, I've missed a blue one. I do apologise. There we go. Bit of blue in there. Darker in the middle, obviously. And then dip your little brush. And just file it out to the outside edge. There we go. Has anybody got any questions while I'm just... Rapidly painting these. There we are. I think you can see that, yeah. I love a tidy craft room. You know what I'm like, Dawn. I'm always cleaning mine. I can't work in a mess. I just It, it makes me head all muddled. Right, so the next one in is pink. So, a bit of water down for the pink one. Make sure it's not too wet. I put a bit of pink in. This is a water one, a water brush. These are really quite inexpensive, like I've said. I can't remember the name of them, no. JZ something or other. I needed them in a hurry. So I got them from the well-known river shop. Arrived the following day. And they haven't been too bad, actually. I've watercolored quite a lot with them. But they are getting a little bit dry now. So... Might have to reinvest in some good ones. And I've got the aqua ones there as well, the Crafters Companion ones. I hardly use them, but I find the colours are a bit harsh. So I wanted quite pretty pinky colours. Do you have to allow the vase, the vase of fine ink to dry before watercolouring? Um, if I'm in a hurry, what I'll do is I'll I'll just give it a little flash with a hairdryer or with me heat gun, just to dry it off. Um, but what you can do is, while it's still wet, if you heat emboss it, then you can go straight away with your watercolour. And it also, it gives you uh, a li little channels and it kind of keeps the ink in. So if you go a bit over the top with the water, it's, it's, it kind of encases it. So you're good to go straight away with that one. Just use clear powder on top of it. Is that it? Is that everything? Yeah. So while that bit dries... We'll move on to the flowers. I chose to do all the flowers pink. Um, I don't know. I just was in a pink mood that day. Same as I've done those. I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to wet the petals. And I'm going to drop some ink in. The centre. 
Might need a bit more than that. You're probably all screaming at the screen. What are you doing? How are you colouring like that? But this is how I do it anyway. There we go. I hope you're not all bored watching <laughs> watching me colouring some flowers and there we are. Right. This one too. Just go straight in with the pen. Lift a bit out. And this one. The others I've done already, like I said. So we're good with them. I like flowers on a project. I think it just finishes it off. And Julie's got loads of flowers, so that's all good. You've always got a flower for every occasion, really, haven't you? I find it mesmerising to watch people colour. Tracy's... Is... Oh yeah, I do that all the time. I bought, I had, Dawn and Julie came to visit. Now it must have been, must have been October, November last year. And we all went off and had a little trolley round uh, the range. And I bought ribbons and stuff. And do you know what? I, cu I couldn't find them. I put them away, couldn't find them anywhere. And the other day I was, I was moving boxes out of the shed. And uh, it was rattling. I thought, what's that? Went in there. There's me ribbons. They've only been missing for a year. I mean, really. So, butterfly next. Um, uh, two little ones and a big one. Not sure I'm going to use all of them, but hey-ho, we'll have a go. So, I'm going to start with pink in the middle. I'm keeping the colours tight. The colours that I've used all the way throughout it. So, a bit of pink there. And just file it out a bit there and then I'm going to use blue on the outside so I'll do the same on this one just in case and that one just in case I use both of them you never know and a bit of blue I'll whip a bit of blue onto this one so it's nice and bright and then what will happen is where it joins together hopefully in the middle you'll get a little bit of purple I, I like watching techniques. I wouldn't say this was a technique like this. It's just a slap it on, really. But it just shows you that, you know, sometimes you don't have to be uber careful with things. And they still look all right. Well, I think they look all right. I'm just going to push that in. That's that one done. And a little bit of blue. Not too much on these ones because they're only little. So... Let them run their own course. If it decides to go into purple in the middle, all well and good. If it doesn't, it doesn't. There we are. Two little butterflies. So now all I've got to do is colour two leaves, which is pretty easy. And then uh, we can start putting this bad boy together. So there we go. I had my granddaughter here today. She could have done this for me. <laughs> she could have coloured them all in. There we go. So let's move all the junk out of the way and I'll bring in the ones that I've already done and you can see that they're dry. Group them together. Oh, there's two different colour leaves. Hey ho. Life's life. I must have gone in with a darker one. But that'd be quite nice. Glad you eventually found them. Did you find the dye that went walkabout? No, didn't find that joke. Didn't find that dye at all, love. Things go walkabout near the land. Craft fairies take them, hide them. Just to annoy you. I think they get great pleasure out of it, to be honest. Right, move them to one side. So, grab your scissors. I've left me good ones in the house. I've been making crepe paper flowers and my good ones are in the house. So these are all gunked up. But what I want you to do is, where you've cut these out, in order to be able to form them a little, shape them, cut down each petal into the middle. It just gives you a little bit more movement. On them. You can do it on both or you can just do it on one, it's up to you. So, and again with this one, I've already done it, I am ahead of myself. And the one, oh gosh, it's all done. There we are. So there's only one thing to do really and that is to add 
a little bit of shade onto the envelope and of course I didn't get the pencil out but it's only here so hi Brenda so all I've done with this is I've just added a little bit of shade I don't know whether you can see that I'll bring it up slowly I think you can probably see the difference between the two um yeah a little bit of shade on that one so I've just got a pencil um I think it's black yeah it's it's the black one now because this this is an ink tense pencil it doesn't take much to give yourself some shadow so don't go heavy handed on it you just want to put a little bit on the top part of the envelope where it folds up and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of shadow around here as well I'm, I'm going really lightly with it I don't want it to be black and mind you, even if you put too much on you can take it off with a little bit of water I'm just putting some shadow underneath where the flowers would be these things add that you know it's just the extra little bit of detail because let's face it it hasn't been a difficult project so far so uh, you know make a little bit of an effort to put some shade in oh I've used blue happy days yeah, colour blind is what I am so there we go a bit of blue shade today it's difficult to see the difference between the two I suppose if I water it down I can pull it off Yeah, don't you just love alive? There we go. Most of it is removed. Let's find the proper black pencil. That looks black, doesn't it? That was the black one. There we go. Better, better. Well, we've got a blue black shadow now. You see? Oh, it doesn't matter. It works quite well, actually. I don't think you'd be able to see them, at least. So if you want the shade to come further out, you just basically add a little bit more water and pull it out there okay we're going to have a blue black one down here I'll show you I'll put too much down that is way too much shade just because it's wet you can pick it up so really and truthfully there's no there's no wrong or right with this because if you do make a mess like I've just done then you can put you can just take it off easy done there we are take a little bit out so I don't want too much and we are going to put a sentiment on the inside of this as well right, there we are you just want a little bit don't forget under your flowers as well there picks up a flower as well it's going well girl it's going well it just shows that everybody makes mistakes doesn't it a little bit of dark in between there as well because there is shade obviously underneath where the flowers would be and up at the top of the envelope too there we go yeah that's not too bad considering I messed up I will go around that one again and just pull it out a bit more there we are that'll do it that'll do it right so let's pop all these to one side move this because I am sure I'll drop it knock it over or dip me card in the blue paint or something right plug in the heat gun so let's put the panels on they should be dry by now so let's hope we don't put no smudgy fingerprints on it nothing's perfect orchid you're right there dead hard to tell the difference between the black and blue I know I, honestly I mean, my eyes are pretty bad as it is, even with glasses like, but they do look pretty much the same. And the annoying thing is, look, look at that. The annoying thing is, in this light, both of them look black. Hey ho. Life's life. Nobody died, it's fine. So, panels on. Try and line them up. Does that one go there? Doesn't matter really, does it? There we are, and we go. Panel number two. I still have pro markers. Can these be used to colour in? And would it need to be what's colour card? No, absolutely no. If you're going to do uh, pro markers, right, then you would need to use 
and I'll see if I can find it in my wee drawer. Um, yeah, it is. You'd need to use this memento ink, okay? Because this is the ink that you use when you're using pro markers. You can use this fine if you heat emboss it. Once you've heat embossed it, it's good to go. You can do anything with it. You can use your pro markers on it then. And no, you don't need to have watercolor card for pro markers. All you need really is a, is a good uh, stamping card. You know, I use three hundred GSM card. Um, I even use that. I just buy one big pack, and then I, I know I've got it for my card bases or whatever for stamping on i just use the same pack I, I don't have a million different types of card so as long as it's super smooth yay grace um pink frog a lot of people use that don't they i'll be honest i've not tried it um philippa i think you use that don't you you'd be able to um advise better on that but yeah yeah i've got pro mark as well but you know what I, I bought a colouring book the other day so i'm going to sit and have a little colour with them i haven't used pro markers for ages right so we've got this so what we want to do is decide which one of these we like the best both the same um so i'm gonna i think i like this one because this one is going to go on the front the nicest one's going to go on the front so i'm going to pop that one in there i'm just going to glue it flat okay a bit of glue on glue it flat and you want it to sit roughly in the middle okay and straight so line your card up against the bottom of your mat or whatever you know your glass mat or whatever you, you craft mat and then just pop it down and then this one is going to go on here and what you want it to do is completely sit on top of that you don't want it to sit like that so you've got like double vision. You want it to sit like this. And so therefore you only need to put foam pads or cardboard or whatever else you, you, you're using to glue it down. I always use foam pads when I'm putting them on this. Um, I have got a small tiny roll left to use up somewhere along the line. It was here. Oh, I don't want to have to be, oh I'll have to use this one. I've got one big one and one small one. Pink Frog is a great card you can use, super smooth. Yeah, that's it. I knew Pink Frog had some. I've never tried it, but once I run out of what I've got, I'm going to give it a go because everybody seems to use it. So it must be good if everybody's using it. So if you kind of have a look at this, see where it's going to sit, and then you can gauge where you've got to put it and it kind of works out where the where the point of the envelope is so i'm going to put some foam pad on this side now i know brian and then use cardboard and i had no cardboard but i have got a parcel coming tomorrow so hopefully i'll have some cardboard to cut up and put in i have been pretty good i have not been buying loads of things from amazon or whatever so i didn't have any left i used it all the other week on my samples so, I might have to stand up to do this to make sure that I don't mess up. So, excuse the shade for a minute. Right, I'm going to pop it there. There we go. So, you've got it dead on top of itself. And that's what you need. So, now we're going to embellish it. Okay. Uh, I'll bring the flowers in, all of the ones that I've coloured. Now, shaping flowers... Um, a lot of people use a ball tool and um, a bit of sponge. My, I melted my stamping mat. I don't need it now. I've got a stamping platform, so I'll cut it up and I'll, I'll use that. Now, with these ones, to be honest, you can probably just shape them there. Because you've cut into them, you can just sit them up and shape them there. It depends, it depends what you want. Now, I've got, I've got one here that I'm not going to use, but if you cut into the the flower and you use your ball tool if you're using 300 gsm card like i am sometimes if you go around the outside of it okay so you're kind of cupping it what happens sometimes and you can wet the the card is it kind of wrinkles it 
and that's not the look I mean obviously if you want that look that's a great look for various projects but for this one because it's pretty I don't want it to be wrinkled can you see it kind of crinkles it I don't I can't describe it it crinkles it up and I don't want that look on here not on this one gives it good dimension but it wrinkles it maybe it doesn't work like that if you don't use 300 GSM card but I always do so all I'm going to do is just shape it with my finger I'm just going to push it in and let's face it we flatten it anyway so if you've cut your flower and you've got a little dodgy bit there take it off because when you cut into it sometimes you don't cut into it straight and it leaves a little tiny edge to the petal which doesn't actually look quite good so I've took them off there we go so what we're going to do is lay out your composition. I like to do this before I actually stick anything down. I like to see where we're going. I mean, I'm lucky here because I've got one to follow. Yeah, I, I'm not keen on the crinkles. It's okay if you're doing a mixed media item, you know, where you've got loads and loads of textures. But this is pretty. This is flowers. So I always start off with the big one. Okay. And my, my big flower is going to have two layers. So choose which layer you like the most and offset it. So that's the first thing I'm going to glue, the two layers together, if my glue gun wants to work. Yeah, it does, happy days. So I'm just going to offset one petal against the other so it's got a bit of oomph. And then you can lift the petals up. And the first one I'm going to lay out before the glue is going there, okay? Now, I haven't doubled up the rest of them because... I want that one to be the focal image. I want that one to be the wow in the middle. Okay, so I'll just shape all the others. And I always go, largest one you've got, then the next one down. And it's not the law, <laughs> but I have to have the same on both sides or it really starts to irritate me. Um, so that's going to go on there like that. And then the two smaller ones are going to sit either side of that. Okay. And then in between, we're going to put these leaves. So the first leaf, I will glue down and pop in there. One's going to go in there. And then the rest, I'm going to snip into. Okay, so we can actually start putting this together. Are we getting pretty in the centres? We are. We are, we are, we are. I'll put them on last. But I'm not going to use glossies. I use glossies on the other one. I mean... I'm gonna use because I don't want to use all my glosses up. You know, you know, like people have them the thing with paper. Um, just they buy one to use and one to stroke. I, 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 no, I never do that. I buy a paper pad, I use it. But I'm getting a bit like that with the glossies. What can I say? I don't want it. I look at them and I, I just stroke them. I don't. They're too. Sh I use them on Julie samples. And. Uh, I will get round to using them on other people's cards, but they're my favourites, so I'm going to use some gems, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, we always get prissies in the centre, don't we, Dawn? It's got to be done. Right, so that one that I'm putting down now will keep that leaf there, okay? Just want a little bit poking at the bottom, and this one here will keep that leaf up the top. There we go. Pop it in behind there. And that's the good thing about putting this on with the foam pad. You can always go in and pop some bits and bobs behind it. Okay. So now comes the leaf bits. So cut into them. So obviously that's too long to go there now. So I snip in. Put a bit of glue on. And we want to equally put some leaves behind these flowers. So they poke out like this. I am a one for lots of leaves and flowers, I must admit. So, i keep that one. I'll take that one off and I'll put this one here. So we've got some there too. I mean, don't be scared to cut into them and um, cut even just a single leaf out if that's all you need. Just one single leaf, you know. That way you don't have to cut as many because you're using them all snipped up. Lift up your flower petals, pop them in underneath. There we go. And I think I'm going to use 
yeah, I'll use this one I snipped. You might have to snip it again to make sure it fits. Lift it up. No, nope, it fits fine. Pop it in there. Have I got one missing? Three up there. That'll do, I think. Otherwise, I'll sit faffing for half an hour over one leaf. This bit takes the longest for me when I'm when I'm you know when I'm working on cards, putting it together. No bother. It's the last little tiny bits that you do, isn't it? That you spend half an hour over messing about with, and really, it should have took you five minutes. Okay, so I'm going to put some what are they called? Gems. I've got them here. So blue on blue, obviously, I'm going to put blue on blue ones, just a little shiny in the middle. I'm not going to do every single one, I'm only really going to do the big ones, but you have, obviously, because you've got two lots, you've got one underneath, you can't do one without the other, that wouldn't be fair. So open it up and pop some in there. Now at this point, while you're doing this, you can have a good look at your design and see if it needs any extra little detail okay uh, and in that I mean have you missed out some of the details on your flowers because you can go in now with your pen but the the other end and color in bits add a little bit of line here and there if you find feel like your middles aren't dark enough you can darken them up just add a little bit more detail color in any stamen bits that you want you get the gist and um, they look okay actually um, yeah, they don't look too bad. So now you can go in with your pink ones. And I must have used all my pink big gems up, so I'm going to use the tiny ones. I don't know. I think these are by Marianne Designs, these gems. I won them. Well, I got them as part of a prize for a competition. So hey ho, use them. I put some in the middles. Does this take the longest piece of a bit of time or what? So, in we go. And we all go quiet and stick your tongue out while you're doing it. <laughs> Just a few more. Um, I did put, I think, yeah, I did. I put gems in the corner. You can over gem something, can't you? So I won't put them in the corner of this. But, yeah, I can show you them with it on. One more, that's it, job done. Okay, so there's the gems on. And now all we've got to do is put the sentiment on and put the butterfly on. So I'm going to put me, thanks Karen. Yeah, it is a pretty little card, isn't it? So I'm going to put my butterfly there. Um, and I've got a, two little ones. So I'm going to, this is where you find if you've got a little gap somewhere that you're not right into, you can pop a butterfly in. I'm just going to stick it on the flower, hey ho, and let it, like it's just landed. There we are. And I've got one more, why not use it? Tiny little thing, isn't it cute? I do like butterflies. We're growing butterflies at the moment. I don't know whether you've seen them. Butterfly gardens, they're called. You send off and you get some caterpillars come through the post. Poor little things get jiggled about. And then within two days, three days, they've grown twice the size. By five or seven days, they're all, they're really big. And then they attach themselves to the top of the tub. And then you put them in, in, a, in like a big net with a zip on the top. And you feed them, and then when they when they turn into butterflies, and the kids can watch them turn into butterflies, you take them out to the field and let them go. How lovely is that? So, I've been cultivating the things for a couple of days, and uh, my granddaughter took them home today, and they are all little plump, juicy things now. They are with little hairs all over them. Sweet. Right. So I'm going to just put the sentiment on now. I didn't foil these in front of you because um, the, I think it was last week, could have been the week before, I've slept since then, but 
Julie did a whole um, Facebook live on how to, to, you know, to use up your foils and do your sentiments. Philip has done it on his. I think Joe did it. I think everyone's done it. So I thought, well, I won't do the old here's how you foil it thing because everybody must know by now. But I've used the blue foil and it looks really nice, actually. I like the blue on it. So I'm going to pop happy birthday on. Um, and hopefully it will be straight. So happy. And I'm going to use the big birthday. And I don't mind it if it even hangs off the edge. That'll look kind of sweet. So in that case, just glue the top of it birthday on there give it a wiggle and it'll help it stick quicker have a look make sure you've stuck it on straight the happy isn't too straight like is it looks like it's already had a few drinks that one that's better happy birthday you don't have to put them on both if you don't want to but i've got just for you as well you could have just put just for you on the front those sentiments, uh, the foilable ones, they've got so many different occasions in. Get well soon. I mean, I guess you could use this card for anything, really. Any of those occasions. Happy anniversary. Any of them. That's in it. Just. And I've chose the small for you on there. Just the same as I did before. Just for you. And we've got the bottom of the uh, envelope there to line it up. There we are, straighten it underneath. Now I'm not going to put gems in the corner because you all know how to do that. But there's the one I did the other day. So they come out slightly different colours each time, don't they? So that's kind of cute. Oh yeah, butterflies. Oh no, my worst thing. I have this thing, guys, about butterflies flying upside down. As far as I'm aware, <laughs> butterflies do not fly towards the floor kamikaze style they float down this way so butterflies and dragonflies don't go downwards and do you know that's my pet hate when i see a butterfly upside down on projects it really it makes me cringe i don't know why but it just does it's sad um so that's them too now i did say i've done it in a different um a different color way so i'll pop them up there and also, it doesn't have to be 5 by 7 so you're going to need uh, sunglasses for this one, because this is the brightest card I've ever done. I'm going to take some pictures and put it on tomorrow, and I've used a different set. Okay. I'll make it look easy. They must have a go, but I'm sure it won't be easy. Honestly, it's easier than it looks. So this one started life as a DL card. And I've done exactly the same thing. I've, felt, I've scored it. And I've pushed it back to make a Z fold, just like we did with this one. But this time I've used the, um, I think it's called heart felt. Hold on, let me have a look because it's just here. Yeah, it's, I've used the um, layers, frames and banners dies uh, by Julie, obviously. I've used the sentiment medley to put that one on. I've used Hazel's butterfly because it's the law, you have to and uh, heartfelt sunflowers but what i've done with this is i've done it twice and i but this, this the second layer i've just cut as you can see into the flower and took the top layer off but i did heat emboss this with white wow powder and then i put some leaves on it the background here was done in exactly the same way inquires except i stamped and embossed the sunflower into the background of it first and then once I dinked it I just used a tissue and wiped over the top to get the ink off and make it look a little bit whiter. I could probably go over it again to be fair I'm sure if I went over it again with the tissue I could take off some more because this is mind you it's not white white this is um I think it was glacier white you just remove the 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 um the ink that's sick there is a little bit still on there um you just remove the ink that's sitting on top of your um, embossing there you go so yeah i'll put some photos on of this one tomorrow but you can get the same it's the same card but it's just done with slightly different dies and it's a different shape so you know you can use your imagination go with an eight by eight do an even bigger one 
you might just have to put a few more layer mats and mats and layers on it but yeah there you go so thank you for joining me and i shall see you tomorrow uh don't think philip has got a technique tuesday tomorrow i think it's next week um but there's a massive launch on thursday if you've got it all in your diaries at nine o'clock i think julie's launching a new hazel eating stamps oh wait till you see them my god you're gonna love them and the samples they are epic so i shall see you all on thursday and thanks very much for giving your time up to watch me make a couple of cards all right guys thank you bye bye have a good evening